Hey, it's Vanessa with CraftyGemini.com. Today's tutorial is teaching you how to sew curved seam patchwork pieces without using a single pin. Now you know that sounds pretty impossible if you've ever tried to sew curved seams before, but I'm going to show you a little tool that I recently discovered and it makes making these little drunkard path blocks super easy. So to make one of these drunkard's path units, you're going to need two separate pieces, this inside portion and the outside. Sometimes they call it the pie and the crust, but you'll need two pieces. You'll need a template to cut these out because they need to be specific sizes so to make sure that everything matches up once it's sewn. To do that, you can find it either in magazines, quilt books, and sometimes some websites will host PDF versions of templates for you to print out and then trace around on a, a sturdier material like cardboard or some of that template plastic you see in the craft stores. You'll need to create one for each piece, trace around it, and cut out each one of your pieces. And as you can imagine, that can be very time consuming. To cut these two pieces out, what I used was my AccuQuilt Go Cutter and the 7 inch Drunkard's Path uh, die. And that cuts out four of these at one time, so it saves me a lot of time. You can see it comes already prepared with two little notches for you to try and match up. If you were to sew this, Traditionally how it's done with a bunch of pins and trying to ease these curves into this side You can see it's a little awkward the center notch does help you pin it in place there and kind of work your way around it But for a beginner that can be both time-consuming and a little bit difficult to figure out But now I recently discovered this little foot called the curve master presser foot and it makes it so much easier I can literally sew all these curves together without using a single pin. I'll show you here What you can do with the drunkard's path block? This is four of those little pie sections all put together with the, the zebra print facing in the center. And then you can see what a different effect you get when you alternate them. Now let me show you how it's actually sewn together. First thing we have to do is actually install the Curve Master foot itself. I took off the entire foot section of my machine. You see that this down here is the little foot and this is the whole ankle portion. Because my machine doesn't allow me just to slip on the foot itself, the box that you, when you order the Curve Master foot, it actually comes with all these different little adapters. And on the back of the packaging, it tells you for which makes and models you need which one of the adapters for. So for this machine that I have that's a, a newer Singer, but it's a really basic model, this is uh, adapter number two that I need. So I'm just going to slip it over my foot and screw this in to my machine here, and I'll be ready to stitch. Here we have both the little pieces that make our Drunkard's Path block unit. And so I lay them, this is how I like to do it visually. I show it and I put it in front of myself the way it's supposed to look once it's finished so I don't get any parts confused. Now I'm going to turn this over here so I can make the pretty sides of both fabrics touch each other. And I'm going to match up this topmost portion here. This is where we're going to sew down this curve, but I still like to make sure that I align that top raw edge so it keeps everything nice and straight. Now I'm going to place that topmost corner of my little patchwork here under the presser foot and if you can see there where the tip of the fabric is touching, that's a little side edge that measures from the where the needle comes down to that is your quarter inch. And so you want to try to have the fabric touching against that. So I'm just going to put it there and what I like to do is to take a few straight stitches since you can see I have about a half of an inch before I actually start to curve out. I know I can stitch a few stitches just to secure my fabric in place without having to lose my place. So I've already taken just a few stitches to secure my fabric from the top. And now what you want to do is hold one fabric with one hand and the other with this other hand on your left like this. And what you want to do is don't force them together. Instead, try to keep them separate here and just encourage both of them to touch on the inner edge of that little thing that I told you measures your quarter inch seam since you want the seam to be even all the way throughout. Now another thing you want to make sure that you don't do is to tug on this fabric because since they're cut on curves remember what that means is that they're cut on the bias and there's a lot more stretch and you don't want to distort your pieces so make sure you don't tug on them. I literally just hold them with two fingers each and just let the fabric slide through my hands. All I want to focus on is making sure that both fabrics as they go through the needle are touching this inner edge so I get my quarter inch seam. just like this. You see as I'm coming around to the notches they're matching up perfectly and I didn't even use a pin. Just like that. And obviously when you start off you want to go slow just to make sure that you get the hang of it. And it may take you once or twice but trust me this foot definitely works. When I come to the end, make sure both those fabrics are under there. 
Um, they also sell this little bent tip tweezers and that allows you just to grab the most bottom little point here without getting your fingers close to the needle so you make sure that you have that quarter inch all the way to the last tip. So I'll grab it here and with this hand I just like to hold this fabric so that it stays straight and doesn't keep curving on me. And do the same thing and you'll see what I mean. Quarter inch seam all the way around and look at that how pretty. 